The Shark Tank. The Shark Tank. No jumper. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. And the most humble. Ooh, Ooh. love that, baby. Appreciate that. Yeah. Today, I got Flacco with me. Flacco. How this one happened. It just happened. Random. Organically. Mm-hmm. We got the lovely Madison Morgan. So- uh, I, I, I love that you came in today, baby, you know, because we can actually sit down, you know, and have a conversation. You had said to me, you know, when you had reached out to me, because you had reached out to me, you I said, did, Sharp, yes. can we can we do an interview? Yes, sir. I said, you know, well, why do you want to come on my show? Because, see, Flacco, see, I don't know about you, Church, but I like to ask questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like to ask An questions. An interviewer likes to ask questions. You know, oh no, God. real, mo- oh, no, my just Lord. a real, baby, of that. baby, no, not just no interviewer, <laughs> just a real motherfucker like to ask questions because you know I see that type of shit a dime a dozen in my life, so that yes, don't sir. really, that don't really move me. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Plenty women out there. It don't really move me. So I had to ask you, why was it that you wanted to come and get on the Sharp Tank? And you had told me that you wanted to humanize yourself. That is correct. (laughs) Humanize. What's that word? And before we dive into you, I got to know, Flacco, what's what's humanize mean to you? I think, okay, so... Mm-hmm. So like when you have like a character being played, right? You know, you know, okay. she wants for like the simps out there or the niggas who, you know, like beat their dicks to her to like kind of see her more so as a human and not just a, you know, a, a dick beating tool. Mm-hmm. Right? You think he hit right uh, on for the, the purpose of this podcast? Yes, that is 100% correct. Okay. Yeah. Good one. Why though? like why don't you want to be a dick beating tool? <laughs> Pardon me? Why, why, uh, um, okay, so why don't you want to be a dick beating tool? Like, why is that not a thing you want to? Oh, I love that men jerk off to me. That's, that makes me real happy. That's not an issue at all. Mm. It's not an issue at all. Uh, what I was taught by someone much more successful than I was to humanize myself. So, she's up there, she's doing better things than I am. Who am I to disagree with such advice? Who, who's that? Riley Reed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did I put you in there? <laughs> yeah, hold up now, bruh. Come on. So Riley Reed gave you advice. On, okay, so how do you think Riley Reed had, had, has uh, humanized herself? Been on podcast, done mainstream uh, appearances. And do you think people want to hear Riley Reed talk or suck dick? Well, I'll tell you what. My little brother said, I think Riley Reed's hot. And I was like, ah, oh, gross. Like, I know why you think that. He goes, no, no. I've never, I've never seen her porn. I go, really? He goes, nah, I saw her on another podcast. I won't, you know, stay here out of respect. That nigga lying. Of course he's lying. <laughs> but what he said was, I like her. She was cool. She was funny. And I like her bangs. She actually had a personality. And he's 19 at the time. So for a 19-year-old to say that, that's saying a lot. Mm. You think so? I think so. He ain't even grown yet. That's the point. He's still pissing on his nutsack. I mean, I'm not trying to like, yeah. but I, I always say it takes it. a lot for a 19 year old to humanize. But a Madison, woman. I always say like, you know, anybody that's mm-hmm. got teen in their age is still young and they're still young minded. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. anybody that says that they're 18, 19, until you start mm-hmm. to cross that bridge to where, you know, the, the lingo within the number of your, your age changes, I don't want to hear that because it's still got teen in the hell. They could be 19 and still act like they're 13. So, I mean, when, 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 you, when you say, like, oh, well, a 19-year-old, you know, said that that's got to speak volumes, this is still a child to me that's still pissing on their nuts and don't really understand life just yet. I'll think about that. I mean, you know, and you say this is your brother, right? Yes, sir. Well, you should put him on game and let him know that he's still pissing on his nuts. I do. <laughs> I sure do. You know, straight I up. I sure do. So you you say you wanted to come here. Good kid, though. Good kid. Uh, I'm sure. Good kid. But, you know, still has a lot of growing to do. Naturally. You know, I'm, I'm going to say that just being a man. You know, I didn't understand it when people that were older than me said that to me. Correct. You know, well, you I thought I knew it all, but you're still right. young. You haven't seen it yet. And I didn't believe that until I had to experience that. Mm-hmm. Young and cocky, as yeah. we all were. 
Yeah. Nah, I mean, shit, yeah, uh, as we all were, but I think these kids or today. Or still they, am in some cases. I, I think these kids really got shit fucked up. Hmm, how so? You Why? Know? Because, you know, it, when I was coming up, it was more morals, man, more structure. I don't give a fuck what you did. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck if you sold drugs. And I get it, Flacco, you be feeling like everybody that fucking sells drugs or has fucking in, inhabited into bad ways deserve 20 to life. <laughs> but that's not the fucking case. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, that's not what mm -hmm. it really is, man. Some people had to do what they had to do because they had to fucking do it. Correct. Mm -hmm. People people fail to realize that. But as of for you talking to your brother, man, tell your brother, man, shit, man, step up, man, and be a man. He's doing you a know? good job, actually. He, but step up and just be a man, you know? <laughs> he's still a little boy. To me, uh, he, he's got growing to do. So I don't even want to talk about him when you try to say what he talked about for another bitch. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I don't want to, I don't want to really, I, I, I don't I'm really want to engage that. I'm really back here to talk to you on the Sharp Tank. Shit, I got mm -hmm. Flacco here. Mm -hmm. And when I right. talked to you, your main thing was humanizing yourself. Sure. And that's why you wanted to come here. So let's humanize. What do you want to humanize about yourself? Ah, loaded question. Loaded question. It's going to open up a lot of doors. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's what we do. You well, ask a question and it opens up a ton of doors. Well, I think the first thing I'd like to start off with is I luckily have a wonderful family. Mm -hmm. And I think that... Does people, your family know you do a lot of drugs? That I do drugs? Yeah, you do drugs. Because I know that you do a lot of drugs. What are drugs? Drugs are bad. You, I'm, drugs I'm, are bad. No, but I'm saying I know that you do a lot of drugs. They know though, what I do Madison. for. They do. Uh, they but know Madison, what I do for work. I know. I didn't seen the fuck. Just your work. We'll get to that point. I know what you do just as narcotics. I know what you've done on your birthday. I've seen a video of you on your birthday. A video. A video of you on your birthday where you had the little baton, the little happy birthday joint on top of your head, it's and you were sitting there, and you were sitting. No, I ain't about no joints, and you were sitting there just nodding at the table. Mm. Oh, I know he gave you that one. Who? Oh, I bet. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I How do I come up with this? You can't bullshit this nigga but You can't bullshit him, man. I to clarify, that was not a narcotic. What was that? No, because I heard you was on about four different substances. Your uh, ass that, wanted to go to the bathroom to go do a, more that, what, to that. get tooted for your birthday. Right. Coke, meth, heroin, so. and crack. Ketamine was in the mix. Ooh! Hmm. That's crazy. So, uh -huh. that story is wildly... Ketamine was in the that mix. wildly exaggerated. Was it? Yes. Or was it true? Parts of it are true. Parts of it are true. The cat or the meme. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fuck. Like, what's what about it? Listen, I'll tell you all day long. I like to party. You like to party. I sure do. How far has it gotten you? Mm. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's been fun. Has it been lucrative? Mm. I think we're so no. However, I think those people who work nonstop and they never pause and take a rest and enjoy the success and money that they have to party wear themselves out and they sometimes wind up having these crises later in life because they never stop to enjoy what they worked so hard for. Yeah, I get man, it. bro, man, come on, bro. Like, that's an, <laughs> come on, bro. That's an excuse, we'll suck, bro. That's an excuse for a lazy bitch, bro. Come on, bro. It's facts. Again, I ain't calling you a lazy bitch, but like, that's an excuse for but a lazy bitch. But you're calling her a lazy bitch. Hey, man, hey, man give me that, bro. Yeah, I'm mean, <laughs> Give him that. He, said, yeah. on, man. he ain't calling you one, but he's calling you oh, one. Oh, I can be real lazy. That's no problem. I'll yeah. tell you right now. But my, my part is this, you know, I, I've never really seen. And I'm not here to knock you. I'm just trying to, we're, we're humanizing. Sure. So I'm trying to understand, baby, when do you let the drugs go so you can actually start humanizing yourself? Because that's what you want to do. You got to mm -hmm. probably let go of the hard narcotics. Yeah, now it's easy to be like, hmm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, that again, don't sound right, you know, but, right. but, but keep you in know mind, the problems though, and the I, vices. I know the exact story you heard, and keep in mind, only I saw it, though. I got to see it. So it's a difference than me okay. just sitting there hearing it from somebody versus, should I, do you want me to pull up the video? No, should I pull up the video right here? Please do not pull up that video. I'm just saying, I'll pull sir, up the video sir, right here. Please do not pull up the video. Oh, okay, so we don't need to bullshit each other. Please, sir, please don't pull I won't. up that video. I, I won't as long as you don't bullshit me. I'm not going to pull it up as long as you just keep it real and say, yeah, I did do that. That is where I am fucking up at. 
We're here to humanize. Mm -hmm. So the way I can help humanize you, baby, mm -hmm. you can't you can't hold the doors. You can't close the doors on me and lock them. Mm -hmm. but, to, but keep screaming past the door to tell me to come in. It's open. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. We're going to humanize. Let's humanize. Right. Let's figure it out together. That's sure. what we're here for. Sure. So you were doing these things. That's how I knew because I saw the video. It's not just something that somebody was telling me. I know. I saw it. Your birthday, this. right? It was your birthday. You were at dinner. No, it was not my birthday. It, was, it wasn't around it? I'll at, least, I'll at least say that. It wasn't around your birthday. It was around my birthday, yes. Okay, so it was for your birthday. We know this. No, it was not for my birthday. It's for a friend's birthday party. It's for a friend's birthday party. Yes. And what narcotics were you on that day? Ketamine. Ketamine. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. That's it? Now That's we're getting it? somewhere. I know it wasn't just it, <laughs> but I just know that now yeah, we're getting somewhere because okay. I want to help humanize, baby. This is how we have to, I have to baptize you. Mm -hmm. We have to tell all the truth. Right. That way we can get to some glory. Right. We, get to, we can get to the promised land right. together. You know what I'm saying? That's what you were on. You know, I, I see that you be, um, you have done porn. You've done things like that. You've been in the industry, right? Yes, sir. Haven't had the greatest rapport. B rapport? Yeah. You haven't had the greatest rapport. You haven't had the, you know, um, the greatest name from, you know, other chicks that have been in the industry that have dealt with you. Right? It's okay. They don't tell me that to I, my I, face, I, but hey. I, no one, we're in the sharp tank. Right. No jumper. But mm -hmm. none Sharpest, coolest crazy. podcast in the world. In the this world. shit's going to get deep. Of course. So we're just, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm trying to help you out here, mama. You, you, mm. you hit me. You said sharp. Let's humanize this shit. Okay, sure. let's do it. We have to go through the faults first. Sure. So let's get through the faults so we can get to being a greater and better us. Yes. There have been females that are in the industry mm -hmm. say that you don't have the greatest name. Okay. What do you, what's your take on that? What do you think that might consist of? Um, I had something pretty awful happen around Halloween. And since then I would not strongly disagree with those women. Right. I would not disagree. Yeah. What do you think that, um, definitely let some stuff go. What do you think that there's, um, what do you think you can do to change? you know, the narrative that you feel like people perceive you to be today? Well, I was watching a documentary on Eddie Murphy. Okay. And I don't know if you remember his scandal, do you? No, no. Enlighten us. And Eddie Murphy was, as you know, the it boy of, I believe, the 80s. Yeah. He was untouchable. And he's a very, very, very talented uh, entertainer. Very gifted. What happened was he got caught with a trans woman in his car about 20, 25 years ago. Whoa, is that true? Yeah, you can look, you can look it up right now if you want. Is that, yeah. is that, so he's right. driving around, I believe it's in like a Corolla or something Eddie Murphy wouldn't drive. Like why would Eddie Murphy drive that shit? So he's riding around in some uh, car that's not gonna draw attention and something was off the plate, something was up. So the police pulled him over and they said, hey, um, excuse me, sir. Who, who, who is this woman in your front seat? He said, and he, they said, this looks like this woman does uh, sex work. And he goes, I don't know anything. Well, this uh, wasn't a woman. This was a man, correct? This was a trans woman. Yeah, it was a man. Okay. Trans woman. So. Trans woman. Yeah, oh, so I, he. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, you have to understand something. Uh, where I come I, from. I got a bleeding where, heart. Where, where I come right. from, and I have nothing against no, no type understand. of community. No, I understand. But you know, but I just have a they never heart told for. me that it was against the law to, <laughs> you know, um, classify people as they were. I don't have a no problem with you being gay. If you like men, if that's mm -hmm. something that you like to do, I have no problem with that. But mm -hmm. if you have a something that's down, that's an Audi. And not mm -hmm. a any, I'm gonna just classify you, and that's just my opinion. I don't have mm -hmm. to sit there and, you know, there's no hate crime to it, but mm -hmm. I just look at things a little bit different. Right. I just refer to anyone of that nature as a trans, okay. trans we'll woman. Conti we'll continue. Yeah. Anyways, so they uh, pull him over. They're like, "Who is this woman sitting in your seat?" And he goes, 
He says, I'm a good Samaritan. I picked her up to get a ride. They're like, yeah, we don't trust that bullshit for one second. Mm -hmm. So they took him in. Or I don't know if they took him in. Sorry, I'm probably wrong on that. But anyways, I don't know if they took him in for questioning or what. But of course, they took uh, the trans woman out and they were like, hey, what was he doing with you? So I'm not a fan of anybody ratting on anyone, but the man was caught. So mm -hmm. she said... They're like, what was he doing with you in the car? She said, he wanted to take me to a hotel room and take photos of me. And, well, we can all guess what else he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, remember, this is 20 years ago. It's Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. Shit. People were just, you know, oh, I can't believe that. And le people love to see people's downfall. Mm -hmm. They love to see people fail. Mm -hmm. Which is what the last six months have taught me. But... <clears throat> Anyways, what he did to solve that problem was he laid low, he took a break, he had plenty of money, he reappeared in Mulan, all the Shrek franchises, and a bunch of kids' movies, mm. cashed out, went back to his house with his 10 kids, mm. and called it a day. And hardly anybody remember. See? Uh, you didn't even know what the scandal was. Right, but, but like, what happened on um, Halloween? Um... I got locked in a car with someone who I was dating. But you get locked in a car with somebody who was fucking dating. Y'all must have been locked in together, right? Yes. So <clears throat> we went to EDC. And he was already being like, he wasn't someone I was particularly into. He was just kind of around. I'm like, whatever. He's like, I, bought, I actually had this weird feel. And I'm not into the spirituality aspect of things, but I had this weird feeling like I shouldn't go, but he was like, but I already bought you the ticket, you should go with me. So I'm like, oh, okay, fine, fine. So I go and um, we get there and he, he's a big guy. So he starts like pushing past people. He's like, I'm like having to run up to catch to him and like scream. Like he's just like having a, like this meltdown. And then, mm -hmm. I lost my card and my ID, and I was like, hey, can you just wait here? Because I knew, I think at this point, this guy was gone. He's not going to help me. I don't, I don't care. So I was like, just, oh, and he was trying to fuck one of my friends on top of that in front of me. So I was like, oh, yeah, you're definitely gone. <laughs> Why was you mad about that shit? Oh, like, I don't care about friend. that. I don't care it's about that. your friend. It's my, it was my friend from high school. But they both your friends. Mm -hmm. Y'all at ADC. Oh, she was fine. She didn't do nothing wrong. Y'all at ADC. Y'all getting high and y'all fucking. Oh, we didn't fuck there. <laughs> but I'm just saying, y'all at EDC, y'all getting high. We're partying. Y'all yeah. partying, y'all doing y'all thing. Right, but he, so, my main point is, though, he was, like, screaming at me, but he's like, oh, I'll wait all day long for her to come back. But he couldn't okay. have given a shit less if I was 20 feet behind him. And then not okay. only that, he's, like, knocking in front of people who are trying to take photos. Like, he's just embarrassing the hell out of me. So I'm like, all right, cool. I got I to gotta get out. Like, this guy's getting really weird. He's getting really aggressive. Like, I, I don't like this. I've had worse happen to me before a long time ago, and I know how this shit goes, and it's not pretty. So yeah. at EDC, it's about an hour drive away from anywhere near uh, for uh, the laws of the city so they can have it all um, done throughout the nighttime. It's an hour away at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway and there is no service. So I knew some people there and I'm like trying to text them. I'm like, yo, can you please help me? Like, I need to get away from this guy. There's no service. I'm unable to get help. It's hours of him screaming at me, calling me every every horrible name in the book about what a, what a cunt I am, what a miserable bitch I am, about how I'm ruining his life. How he and we were we were nothing serious by the way we'd been casually seeing each other for five months and he's an industry guy so I I, I know the deal is like I never got in his way I was like mm, do you like have fun uh. so he's like you're controlling I'm like controlling like you post about hanging out with other chicks all the time I don't comment um nor am I a believer in wrongly but he just like I honestly blocked out some of the obscenities he said because he just ran out of them but anything horrible he could say to me he kept screaming and screaming and screaming in my ear for hours and i'm trying my best to get away but keep in mind i lost my card and i lost my id so my phone at least was fully charged and i was like all right at least i have that lifeline so we get to the cab station it's freezing because they had it done in october due to covid and i'm you know half fucking naked so 
And he, he does the thing too, where he's like kind of going back and forth. Like every like once an hour, he'll say something nice. Like, oh, like, do you what do you want to do? Do you want to get a ride? Do you want to do this? Blah blah blah. And finally, I'm like, and I and none of my friends are replying. I'm like, fuck, I am stuck with why this you, man. Why do you? Why the fuck do you think it's cool to hang with people? Like if it, and I hate to even say this because it, I hate hearing stories like this. Right. Flacco, like somebody like. Nobody like that. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Mm -hmm. Like even dealing with somebody like that, and even considering that being even your own, hearing somebody, oh well, you know, you can't even find the motherfucker. He's somewhere. Move. He's high. You're high. Two high motherfuckers can't do nothing to get what y'all doing. Y'all might as well went and just got a room, nigga, and box yourselves in. Mm -hmm. The fuck are you doing? At know. that point, I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, I get people want to have fun and do shit like that. Right. But look, you, even to hear you say, mm-hmm, how old are you? 28 years old. 28 years old? When them mm is going to turn into you know the answer to them? Would you let me finish my story, please? Yeah. Man, but I'm trying to really figure it out because the story's no, taking you, us would nowhere. You me, would you let but me the story's finish my taking story? us okay. nowhere. Okay. It's uh, taking us nowhere. Okay. Continue, but it's taking us nowhere. All right, we can skip it. No, keep telling it. Right, here, right. So, like, she. Okay, so, like, what the story is about is she's gonna tell us why, like, the women in, in the industry. I'm gonna tell you have, why I got locked in a yeah. car. Well, you're taking a lot of time <laughs> up talking about how you fucking got locked in the four <laughs> doors. Okay. Come on. I know how EDC works. Okay. Skip that part of the story. How the fuck did you get locked in there? Give us the meat and potatoes of the situation. Okay. So, no card, no idea, it's freezing. No ID, it's freezing. I don't know what to do, but my plan was to give him 100 bucks at this point because I had no ride home. And I said to myself, I said, once I get service, I'm going to let him keep the money and I'm going to get out of this car. So as soon as I get in the car, he told me, bitch, you're going nowhere. You'll go wherever the fuck I tell you. Like, I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to do this. And this is someone who had never acted this way before in their life. Mm -hmm. like, if you meet him, he just seems like real mellow, real whatever. But, um, but yeah, screamed at me for over an hour in the car about How long this. have you known him? I had known him five months. How do you know he's never acted like that in his life then? Oh, he's acted like that in his life. I did some research. I'm just saying, five months, it, it, that's, that's what I'm trying to get to. Like, five months, how the fuck do you know what he's done? You don't know. You're just getting to know him. You're at the five-month marker to where the right. true him's probably about to come well, out. Well, naturally, yes. So I had to beg, plead, scream, hyperventilate, do it. Because at that point, I'm like, I don't know if he's going to kill me. I don't know if he's going to do this. Like, I guess he was so out of control. I'm like, I don't know what this man is going to do, but it looks like he's going to hurt me. So he finally, finally drops me off. And my girl, so I call my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, I need help. I can't go back to my house. He knows where I live. Can I please come to your home? I like, I just need to be around somebody. And then she remembers this part of him screaming at me nonstop on the phone, trying to get me back in the car, wouldn't let me go. So, start partying too much and uh, tarnished my name a little bit after that. Wait, so you started partying and tarnished your name due to that situation or? Like, uh, several other things, but that was the main one, yeah. You bullshitting. That's drag. That's drag, and don't you okay me neither. Like, okay. No, because that's some bullshit. Because you and I both know you grown as fuck. You and I both know you put yourself in them positions. It wasn't just him. You put yourself in that predicament because you already probably knew what you was dealing with. You're not dumb. You're not dumb. I done heard you talk other places, so you, you're not stupid. You put yourself in that predicament. So to sit here and be like, well, I don't know how I could. You never even talked about how you really got in it. You only talk about how you got out. The reason I got in it is because I had lost my card and my ID. You lost your card and your ID. And I was unable to reach anyone else. <laughs> hey, man, shit. If you got it, all you got to do is just hop in the cab, man, and go back to your room. You ain't got nothing going on. Your ID and your... Man, come on now. I know EDC. Okay. And you didn't just go by yourself, neither. You went with multiple people. You okay. just went with just one other person. No, you went with multiple people, because that's how that party rocked. That's how that part, and they left, and they yes. left you. Of These were your I, friends? Look, listen. These look, your friends? Sir, 
Please, please stop interrupting. You ain't talking to the police. No, nah, bitch. Ain't please. no interrupting nothing. Okay. I'm just trying to figure it right, out. Well, if you you call talk, me. You call me. So I'm trying to figure out where can we humanize you at? Because you have to really get past the bullshit that you really own. You haven't blamed yourself and not a piece of it. It's what you put. You say, oh, well, you know, I get I did this. No, fuck that. All of it was your fault. You know, anything I ever fix, oh, give you an example. I'll give you an example, okay? Look at me. Don't roll your eyes. We ain't in, come on. I ain't your teacher. You ain't in class. You gotta roll your motherfucking Sir, eyes. It is my best attempt to be patient. To be patient for what? Towards you. Why? We here. It's real. We in the field. <laughs> Why not? I want to hear your insight to it, but I also want to hear you blame yourself for it because I've had to blame myself. All the real, stop. All the real ones, I don't want you to say nothing, but just look at me. Just look at me. All the real ones didn't have to go through it, man, of blaming themselves because guess what? You go through that same turmoil again after again after again. You might not know it. I can't be your therapist, baby, because you ain't going to pay enough. But what I can tell you is it is your fault. It's going to be my fault if anything happens to me or anybody else. Learn that. Learn that for you. You can't keep blaming other people because guess what? When you do do it, don't do that. Because I'm watching you. When, when you continue to keep doing that, You'll keep going through the same cycle Do because you don't blame yourself, putting yourself in fucked up predicaments, even getting high. But I guess getting high to you, huh? You think that's just the best predicament to put yourself into? Of course, it's going to go haywire some. Nobody's in their in their right mind and nobody has your best interest. I'm being honest with you. Nobody has your best interest, but you know that you just like to play. I can see it in your face. Mama, I can smell it. I've been around it for a long time, so I know when a bitch kind of, you know, for real, and a mm -hmm. bitch just kind of bullshit and just kind of going through it, like, yeah, okay, keep giving it to me. <laughs> yeah. Keep socking it to me. Of course. Whenever you're done. Mm -hmm. Are you done? <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> I know. If you really want some insight, I'm trying to help you. I want you, you came here for a reason, so I want to help. I don't want to slander. I don't want to bash. I'm trying to figure out when do you blame yourself for it. Because you have to at some point. There's That's my game for you. I'm talking about really blame yourself to look at it like, well, damn, if I probably wouldn't have went with this man, yeah, I'm not going to fuck with him no more. Well, sir, you haven't I'm, also given me a chance to I'm, answer your question. I've been sitting back the entire time just listening. I can only go so long to where I got to pick up the pace so it's not dull. Okay. Just saying. Okay. Well, I'm waiting for you to ask the question. You are the interviewer. interviewer. When do you start to blame yourself? Should have picked better company. Better company? Yes. Yeah. Can always blame the company. Because you keep choosing the company. Yes. You, you keep choosing the company, so you can't always blame them. You invited them in. Yes, you opened the door. Yes, I did. Okay, then. So why even try to keep looking at me like I'm telling you something dumb or you keep trying to sit there and put your eyes down and try to do all this little weird shit, Nemo? What's wrong with you? Nemo? You, that's, you remind me of a little fish. <laughs> I like finding Nemo. A little fish. I like finding Nemo. I'm just being honest. <laughs> Don't know I see you, jerk. <laughs> you remind me of a little fish. That's why Nemo I called you that. You and your little sea. fish, but you want to be in a big pond, baby, and maybe you're not ready for that just yet. You might look, the realest game I can give you, reevaluate yourself sometimes. I've had to do it, mama. Even if it breaks you down. It's broken me down. You ain't nothing different. You ain't nobody different. And what makes you think I haven't done the same? Because you sitting right here looking at me in my fucking face, bullshitting me. I see it in your face. You got a shitty ass way about you. You like to just kind of like mosey along, you know what I'm saying? And think that shit's going to work for you because everybody got the wool pulled over their eyes. See, you try to sit there and you try to do hoodwinks to people. You try to hoodwink them. Oh, well, you know, let me tell them what I, what, what I think they want to hear. Of course. Let me tell them what I think they want to hear and maybe they'll accept it. And if they don't accept it, it'll make them look weird. No. 
you look weird already because you haven't accepted the fact that you fucked up officially, professionally, and mentally. You have fucked up in your choices. So when you can start accepting that, I promise you, mama, you will start to grow. You won't stay down forever. You will not stay down forever. And it won't matter what anybody says at that point, because guess what? You have outgrew them at that point. So who's going to fuck with you at that point? It's levels to this shit. Get off level one and maybe you can get to level two. Get off of trying to always look to blame the next person. I used to be like that for a long time. I used to think it was cool to blame the next person because I'm dealing with them in certain situations. But then I had to start really like looking at it like, damn, when do I start blaming myself? For real. As much as it fucked with me because I was very prideful. I get it. You're very prideful. You want to blame the next person. I get it. I've been there. If you say so. If I say so. No, I know so. Okay. I see it in your eyes. I've looked like that before. Okay. Just trying to get through it. Okay. She's not really receptive, man. Like Not at all. No, like at all. Not at all. And yeah. I'm really trying to like give the game to it. Like, hey, I just yeah, want to see you. Like, you got to start to like, we got to do it for us first. Of course. To make it. But you want to be a maggot about it. Okay. That be the problem, okay. man. Wait, what is this, right? You go ahead and ask another right? question, and you yeah. know what? We will respectfully. Of course. We will respectfully not waste any more of your time, because okay. I feel like we're waste. We're probably wasting your time at this point, correct? However you feel. Right. Go it, ahead and ask a question, Church. If you're 28 years old, right? Yeah. Probably broke and not doing well. You feel me? Like with a shit name. Why not be receptive to a man who females come? And pay for some game. Right. Back uh, for some game. And you're getting like an hour of this man's time to just have I enough am game. I'm also not yeah. broke. Thank you. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, you're broke, baby. You walked up the block. You were hot. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, you're broke, I baby. We come know. on now. So what? The Uber would have stayed with you. He didn't stay with you. He left you. We no yeah, longer. On, I'm going to tell you this. Okay. We no longer wish to speak to you. Okay. And I'm going to tell you this, no baby. Problem. Hey, and it's not a problem at all. We okay. love you, baby, and we wish you the no, best. No, you do not. The Sharp Tank, no jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world, and we better keep these maggots up <laughs> off the stage. We love you, baby. Be safe. Church. Put your maggot ass on. <laughs>